Torch! Thank you. Well, folks, this is it. This marks the end of our Atomus Wave reviews for the time being, as this is actually the last Atomus Wave game I currently own. There are five other Atomus Wave games I'm trying to get a hold of, including Guilty Gear Izuka, Guilty Gear X version 1.5, Fist of the North Star, The Rumblefish, and its very expensive sequel, The Rumblefish 2. I've mentioned this in the past, but finding legit copies of these games can be quite difficult and quite pricey. So until I get all of those games, this will have to do. Metal Slug 6 was the very last of the five games SNK Playmore produced for the Asami Atomus Wave, and it was originally released back in February 2006 in Japan. I consider Metal Slug 6 a return to form for the Metal Slug series after parts 4 and 5. That's not to say those games were terrible per se, just that they didn't really feel too much like Metal Slug 1 through 3. Now I preferred 5 over 4, but still. This one feels much more like a continuation of Metal Slug 3. It's not perfect to be sure, it still features that lame stage loading animation which I disliked from Metal Slug 4 onward, but it certainly regains a lot of the lost charm. The story goes that General Morden is back and once again his forces are hell-bent on world domination. You take on the role of either Marco or Tarma from the Peregrine Falcon unit, or you take on the role of Eri and Theo of the Sparrows unit, or two brand new newcomers, Ralph and Clark. Now Ralph and Clark may sound familiar. They're the Akari Warriors from the 1986 arcade classic. When the team goes to investigate, it turns out that General Morden isn't going it alone. He's teamed up with the Martians again. But this time around, there's a big twist. The Martians are actually being invaded by the Venusians. It's time to lock and load and get ready for the fight of your life as you'll have to take on the Venusians, who possess power so great that it will take the combined might of everyone to take them out. The first thing you notice when you play the game is that for the very first time since Metal Slug 2, the roster has been expanded, this time to six. Each character has unique gameplay attributes, which was a first for the series. There are also two difficulty levels to select, easy and hard, Easy removes the fifth final stage and eases you into the gameplay by giving you a lot of early bonuses and more powerful weapons to start with. Now hard is the full game and it contains obviously the last level, but as far as I'm concerned it's really the way you need to play even though it is slightly harder and you don't start with as powerful bonuses or weapons. What you're seeing here was taken directly from the hard path, obviously on the Atomus Wave hardware, all legit, no bootleg copies here. So let's talk a little bit about what makes the characters different. Well, to start, Marco begins with his pistol having twice the strength of the rest of the bunch, Tarma gains a pretty cool ability while riding in a slug, the slug is twice as strong as when others ride in it, and the Vulcan cannon power is increased as well. Theo begins each mission with a heavy machine gun, Eerie receives twice as many grenades upon starting and she can even aim in different directions, which is cool. Ralph's melee attack speed is double that of the others, he can also take two hits from most attacks before losing a life, which is really interesting. Clark can perform his super Argentine backbreaker move, which grants him temporal invincibility during and after the move. And there are additional bonuses depending on the character, but I'll leave those for you to discover. The core gameplay is classic Metal Slug. You blast everything in sight until you make your way to the end stage boss. The objective is to finish the game using as few lives as humanly possible. Much like the previous entries, you can look forward to some really excellent slugs or vehicles. Returning favorites include the original Metal Slug, Type R Metal Slug, Slug Flyer, and a Slug Gunner prototype. 
New slugs include Roba Slug, or Donkey Slug as I like to call it. Mr. Slug is also known as Slug Driller, which, as the name implies, is actually an homage to Mr. Driller. There's also the Proto Gunner, which is similar to the Slug Gunner from Metal Slug 5, but it has no melee attack or tank mode. Weapons are also handled a little bit differently here. For one thing, you can stock two different weapon upgrades and even drop one for your co-op partner to collect, or just discard it altogether. You can switch between the stock weapon or one of the two weapon upgrades at any time, which is extremely handy for keeping a certain weapon to use against a stage boss. The slide from Metal Slug 5 has been removed, which is good because that move caused a lot of balancing issues in that game. You can even find a powerful new weapon called the Zantetsu Sword, which allows you to neutralize enemy bullets and creates a shockwave from the melee weapon. You can even perform certain special move techniques by pressing buttons in this certain sequence. Think of it like a fighting game. Metal Slug 6 really did try and do it all. It feels like SNK Playmore was trying to redeem themselves for the previous two entries in the series, even though they weren't particularly responsible for Metal Slug 4, at least. The Metal Slug series has always been known for its incredible animation and attention to detail, and this one is no different. The backgrounds are all brand new and look fantastic for the most part, but the character sprites look about the same as they did before. There's virtually no slowdown in this release though, which is quite impressive considering how much action takes place at any given time. Of the entire series, this game has the most diverse locations and really is a testament to the developers. They did a really good job here. They wanted to make a bigger, badder, more kick-ass Metal Slug and for the most part, they succeeded. The game looks absolutely great and the sound effects and music are just fantastic. This really is classic Metal Slug. One last thing I would like to mention is the fact that there's no blood in this game. All of the previous Neo Geo releases had soft dip settings that would allow you to change the color of the blood to red, but even if you play this game in Japanese mode, that's not an option. I thought that was really, really curious, and if any of you know of a way to make the blood red, by all means, please let me know. As far as I know, there is no way of making the red blood appear, except if you play the game on the Metal Slug Anthology. Metal Slug 6 would mark the last time the series would debut in arcades. Metal Slug 7 was developed from the ground up for the Nintendo DS before moving on to the PlayStation Portable and eventually the Xbox Live Arcade. But it's sad that we haven't seen Metal Slug 8 since. The series has moved on to mobile platforms and as such the gameplay has completely changed. This review makes me kind of sad because it really was the end of an era. SNK Playmore did all they could to make this game something special, and it was. It really was. For those looking to play through Metal Slug 6, you can play it as part of the Metal Slug Anthology, which was released on the Wii, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation Portable. Back in 2011, I reviewed the Metal Slug Anthology, and if you'd like to go and take a look at it, you can go ahead and see if the collection should be worth your time. And I'll give you a hint, it certainly is. Metal Slug 6 is one game in the series that deserves to be played. And as such, it comes highly recommended. Thank you very much for watching these last few weeks of videos on the Atomus Wave, and I hope you've enjoyed. Next week, we'll be moving on to a different arcade platform.